Hello, and welcome to episode 2 of my efficient design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24. In this episode, it is time to get into orbit, but we're not going to get into orbit in just a simple fashion. I want to get into orbit with a vehicle that we can bring back down intact. That's right, a completely reusable orbiter. Now, I'm not going to make this series into a 100% reusable space program. People have already done that, Scott Manley and others. Uh, that's, that's not going to be my gig. I will perhaps try that with a modded series because around Earth that's a much bigger challenge and might be a little bit more enticing. Uh, but for this series I'm going to try and make it a little bit more fluid. I'm not going to say 100% reusable just in case I want to try something that ends up not being reusable. I don't want to be constrained. But uh, for the orbiter to getting into orbit, getting a single Kerbal into orbit, I think we can manage it. And I've done some calculations off to the side uh, that makes me think that we can do it. So, uh, but I do want the aerodynamic dynamic nose cones and the radial decouplers. So let's do some research. And let's also, I don't think I actually need any of these. Um, you know, a gimbling engine will eventually become useful, maybe. The, uh, I guess I'll pick it up anyway. Let's just open up this entire tier. Uh, but yeah, let's go to the VAB and we're just going to focus on orbit first and then we'll worry about all the other contracts that I've, uh, I've accumulated and we'll take care of those in turn. But I want to actually try and make this, this reusable orbital vehicle. So here we are, obviously we need the command module and it's generally safe to slap one of these parachutes on since we don't really have any other nose cone. And so by my calculations, what I need is, and I've been reasonably precise about this, I need, I, I, I technically need five of these tanks here, but I, I figure that I can squeeze this little tank on top as well. And this is all based on the thrust weight ratio of the of the parts and we're gonna go with the LVT30 because we're gonna put gimbling engines on the outside. So this is the center stack but we're bringing everything back intact. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive than a uh, orbital vehicle strictly speaking needs to be. We could make a cheaper one but we can't make a cheaper one and still return it all back. Now I could probably skip the radial decouplers Maybe that would be better. I don't know. I don't know if it's better to keep the radial decouplers or just skip them. They are expensive after all. Uh, very expensive in fact. Uh, how much are they? If I recall correctly. 600. And you know, uh, this, this engine is only 850. So you're talking about a uh, huge amount of expenditure to launch it. Of course we're going to bring it all back. But yeah, probably best to leave it off. It depends on whether the joint between these tanks and these tanks is going to be okay because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have engines like so and we really need to be able to land, right? Because we're bringing it back home. We're going to bring it all back home and that means it needs to withstand a certain amount of an impact. Yeah, I guess that'll be all right. Um, I think this was the right amount. Put the nose cones on. Uh, strictly speaking, I don't know how those are expensive. Well, we're trying to be an efficient design series. And while this isn't my preferred design, necessarily, well, we're, we're going to bring them back. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's let's slap the nose cones on on the bet that we're going to bring all this back. Um, if we don't, well, at least we've gotten quite a few contracts done, so we're not going to be in any big trouble. I do want to try and land it properly, and preferably at the VAB. Though I have not the VAB, the launch pad, but I have not practiced that at all. I've never been able to launch, uh, return anything back to the launch pad. Never really tried very hard probably will be trying very hard in this series now though. Oh, we don't need that symmetry, we need angle snap. And actually let's get the landing struts on angle snap too. 
And we should probably have more parachutes. How much do the parachutes cost? Well, you can't really skimp on parachutes, so we'll, we'll just go with that. Put them a little higher. So, what is going to happen is that uh, fuel for the center engine is going to run out first. And that's good because the LV-909s are a little bit more efficient in the vacuum than that one, but this one is more efficient down at the surface. So that's ideal. And we are going to rely on the fact that there will be still some fuel left over in here to bring our Kerbal back down. If it looks like we're going to be running out of fuel before orbit and uh, we won't be able to bring him back down, we'll just keep it suborbital. The only goal I'm going to aim for in this is orbit. So achieve orbit around Kerbin. We'll worry about the rest of this another time. Yeah. And they'll, they better pay us a lot for the rest of this. Uh, so this is just, how much is the orbital contract worth? Uh, can we see from here? I don't think we can. No. Okay. Oh, I should mention, I'm uh, only recording this at 600 by, uh, 1600 by 900 because uh, at uh, 1080p, it, the text was not coming out right. I've tried various ways of encoding it, doubled the bit rate, and it still doesn't work. So, uh, so I'm going to call this Orbital Vehicle 1. And so I, I've uh, decided to step down to uh, 720p for the sake of readability of the text until I can figure out what to do about it. I think it's either the converter program or the codec I'm using to convert it to MP4 before editing it. But it's, uh, it's a bit of a hassle. So sorry about that, but 720p for now. And uh, let's see, who should we send? I think we've decided that Jeb has done enough already, so Bill will be the first to, to achieve orbit. Jeb will be our Alan Shepard, and I guess Bill will be our John Glenn. All right, so let's take it out to the launch pad. Okay, looks to be balancing all right. That's good. SAS on, throttle all the way up. We'll need that. Um, yeah, uh, let's get that up. That's the most important thing. And without further ado, let's see if this works or whether I've got a tragedy on my hands. Off we go. Okay, well, positive vertical acceleration is always a good thing. Bill looks copacetic. If, uh, if this is successful, of course, he'll be getting quite a lot of science from this, uh, doing EVAs in orbit and all that. Gotta watch electric charge, of course. I don't think I unlocked a battery pack, and we're going to... We're going to run out of that probably once we shut off the engines in orbit. Probably I'm going to have to turn SAS off to uh, minimize that consumption. We're at 2 kilometers, 65 meters per second, going nicely. Approaching one minute into the mission, Bill Kerman is is oddly worried. I thought Bill was a little bit more of the the excitable type, but uh, he looks concerned. Maybe he prefers that Jeb does this sort of thing first or something. I don't know. And you know what? I should have emptied the mod propellant. I'm not using the mod propellant, and it's just extra mass and extra cost. I should have just emptied that until I get RCS units. No point carrying it up with us. I'm gonna start a little bit of a gravity turn here, just uh, nosing in the right direction because after playing realism overhaul so much I can't stand going straight up for such a long period of time even if it might be the most efficient thing to do. Now, if I've got all of this right, what's going to happen is once the center engine's fuel runs out, we'll still be accelerating. If we end up decelerating at all because the thrust weight ratio of the LV-909s isn't enough, then, then I've done it wrong. My maths did not work out.
Okay, good. We're still accelerating. Math works. That's encouraging. Mostly worried about the joints because, of course, I didn't put the radial decouplers, but we seem to be okay. Uh, the gimbling from the engines is excellent. Of course, once we get into orbit, it'll have to be the gimbling from the command pod itself, which will be a little bit more dicey. Gotta try and make this as efficient as possible, of course, because we're so tight on fuel. We're not going to go too far above 70 kilometers. Uh, forgive me for our being in this view, but like I said, uh, efficiency is important here if we want to get down in any decent shape. Let's call it 72. Okay. I'm going to turn SAS off right now. So, do we have enough fuel to make orbit? And deorbit. Otherwise, Bill Kerman is going to be a stranded Kerbal without any chance of rescue or a contract attached to him until we get a better vehicle up. Okay, I think we can sort of time warp here. Once I get into more complicated missions, I'm going to have to turn the music off because I'm going to want to cut out a lot of the tedious parts like long transfers and having the music constantly change during those might be a little bit annoying. Okay, we should be coming up on uh, Apoapsis here. Again, just want to barely make orbit here. Whoa, definitely pitching down is not efficient. Come on. Oh, we don't have SAS on. Uh, I should turn on SAS just for this phase. Not too much. a little bit higher than I wanted to but okay that's 70k is does that fulfill the contract come on yes achieve orbit around Kerbin done okay uh, electric charge is depleting so let's turn off SAS now so I wanna get back to oh it's gonna be in the dark darn it that's gotta be an added wrinkle I'm going to try and descend starting here and make it a sort of steep descent. Try it out that way. I don't know if that's the best way to do it. Probably not. The problem is if you try and... Uh, well, I guess from with this end being at 208, maybe it's possible to do a slight burn in. Yeah, alright. Let's say we turn retrograde and do a small burn here. Let's get SAS back on to stabilize things and just quickly pull that down. And we'll do further burns to drop that even further, but for now it's okay. Just trying to get back. Oh, what am I doing? We were supposed to be doing science. 
Well, we could do that on a separate mission. Uh, the contract's the contract, but uh, yeah, let's uh, EVA bill and do some quick science. EVA report. Okay, keep data and board. Lots of wiggling. SAS not doing a very good job, so let's turn that off and use a quick stabilization time warp instead. Kind of have a crew report in space near Kerbin. Keep data. Uh, this possibility that we're over some highlands or something like that. Uh, no, let's not deploy a shoot. Mountains. Mountains is good. Keep data. Mountains is actually pretty tough to hit sometimes. Don't think we've done above the water, so uh, once we get over there, that'll be an easy one to get. Uh, do, do, yeah. Grasslands next, and then perhaps some desert. Okay. Of course, I'm not trying to, you know, max out the tech tree in two missions or anything like that either. No, we've, we've already got that. So, so no rush on the science. We're just trying to do things. This is all highlands. Okay. Let's wait till desert. Oops. Okay, deserts, excellent. Keep data. And finally, if we can get the water before we hit uh, 70k, that'd be nice. Uh, we don't have shores yet either. Uh, I don't know if these are sh shores or how easy it'll be to get shores. Let's see. Still deserts. Guess it must be where our center of mass is or something. I don't know. Upper atmosphere. Well, keep that data. It looks like we're not going to get the water this time. Just barely missed it. Okay. Turning retrograde. Now we need to do a little bit more of a burst to ensure that we land at the KSC I think I think this is gonna be too much as long as I hit the water on the west side of KSC I think I'm I'm happy since I haven't done this before and we are also gonna be in the dark try a more legitimate attempt we also seem to have the wrong inclination I think weird though don't think we had much of an inclination going in I have no idea whether we're going to be hitting in time. Okay, now the atmosphere is trying to slow us down. And 
if the atmosphere doing that, I don't need SES. The atmosphere will keep us to the retrograde, hopefully. Yes. Come on, atmosphere. Looks like a pretty good approximation of where I need to be hitting. Where is the KSC? Right around here, right? As soon as we get above uh, past those mountains, it's pretty much all right. Not fair to be in map view when we're trying to do re-entry. Now, which little sparkle is the KSC? Don't think we see it right now. There's those mountains. Oh, darn. Come on, get us past those mountains. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Come on, grasslands. Uh, oh, fudge. I think I overdid the deceleration. Okay, um, I've got to try and land short of the mountains. I don't know if that's going to work or not, but uh, let's do that. Gear out. Probably not going to work very well. Well, we're going to find out what kind of slope this thing can handle. Don't have ladders yet, otherwise I'd probably have them off to the side so Bill could climb all the way down, get a surface sample, and get back up again. I don't fancy trying to have him drop down from this sort of height. Six point five meters per second. That's good. Didn't know how slow we could make it with uh, this array of parachutes, but uh, it looks to be okay. Probably would want a little bit less than that for the sake of the landing struts and the engines, but we'll see. Bill looks cheerful. Okay, I I think we've landed. Uh, there's a little bit of tilt though, so I'm gonna quickly recover vessel. Uh, no point taking chances. Yeah, that's uh, that was uneven ground there. Okay, obviously not as much science as we could have earned if we had hit uh, all the biomes along the way like I should have uh, but you know above the water and all that definitely grasslands would have been hit as well um, but yeah so we've, we've missed a few but that's all right like I said I'm not gonna try and blitz the science all all the time uh, okay let's see what we got 94.7 uh, percent of our total value that's good 71 kilometers away from the KSC uh, could have been better uh, with practice hopefully uh, command pod parachute fuel tanks the liquid fuel engine uh, all the engines landing struts are expensive uh, the nose cones are very expensive but we got them back uh, radio mount parachutes are like crazy expensive uh, that is like the major cost of this are like the fuel tanks and the 
and the radio, radio mount parachutes. I really do think they need to fix that because that should not be the main cost of a rocket. But we we got it. We got twenty two thousand back. We got our crew member back. Got some reputation for bringing Bill back, and so yes, successful, completely reusable orbital vehicle. Okay, Let, let's just take a look at what contracts we can get. We've got a lot of contracts to do, but let's just take a look. And uh, now we're going to be getting the rescue ones because uh, we've done the orbital mission. Launch stability enhancer. Well, I do, do want to test that. Where do we have to test it, though? Um, landed on Kerbin? Uh, does... Does that mean after we launch, or is it okay before we launch? Let's just pick it up and get it. Explore the moon. That might be a little bit far away from our capabilities. Let's just focus on these for now. I want to try one more thing. And uh, the intriguing one is probably uh, testing the sonic fuel booster in a suborbital trajectory over Kerbin. So we have to get it up there and then ignite it. Okay, so let's see about trying for this one. This one would have to be done on its own, I think, anyway. These others uh, we, we'll see at a separate time. But this one seems to be a unique one. And so let me take care of it now. Unfortunately, we can't do this unmanned. We don't have any other... Well, I, I should take a look if we can unlock the others. The... Um, the remote control ones. Yeah, let, let's actually go to the science. Okay, let's quickly take a look. We do need batteries, but let me just hunt for the remote control unit if there is one. Oh, uh, well, there is this probe core. Okay. And everything is, of course, very useful at this stage. But uh, let's get a probe core so we don't have to send any of our Kerbals up to test uh, uh, the solid rocket booster. But we also could use the rechargeable battery bank as we saw in the previous mission so let's unlock that as well okay now we're ready to go so stay put Nick and I'm just gonna slap the solid fuel booster at the bottom of it and but if we try and carry its full seven ton mass it's gonna be quite overwhelming to try and get that even into a suborbital trajectory so I'm going to give it a minimal amount of fuel and that's the least I can put in I'm also going to give it the least amount of thrust. That should be fine. And in fact, I'm going to rely on it to deorbit itself. Maybe I'll give it a little bit more fuel. It's going to be in charge of deorbiting. Maybe we should return it back. After all, it is a prototype. Well, I, I guess this one isn't a prototype anymore. I've unlocked the technology, but... But yeah, technically... well. Could we just... no, we have to ignite it up there. I was thinking if uh, we could just uh, bring it up there on its own. Okay, th this can't be a very heavy payload. Let me launch it and see how much this weighs altogether. Oh wait, um, does the probe core have... Uh, yes, it does have a reaction wheel. How much does that compare to this one? Not much. Uh, we do have an inline reaction wheel right now, but it is expensive. I don't want to spend extra money on it if I don't need to. This is a suborbital trajectory. I don't think we need to worry about uh, what trajectory it has. So, yeah, let me see the mass of this on the launch pad. And here it is. Go to map view. Info. 2.83 tons. Oh, that's a lot. Okay, so it's still pretty heavy empty. No, no avoiding that, I suppose. All right, uh, back to the VAB. Let's re just revert. Actually, with 2.83 tons, it occurs to me that I probably want the reaction wheel, and we want to bring this all back, if possible. So, this is getting expensive, though. The question is, do we make this expendable and just get rid of it, or do we try and bring it back? I think we do try and bring it back. We, we'll... We'll push the whole reusability thing as much as possible. We will, however, dump the solid fuel boosters here. How many do you think we need? Oh, they're cheap.
Yeah, this is the main cost here. I think two parachutes should be enough to bring that back down. Keep it under 10,000 maybe. These we'll discard. Let's see now. What's the mass of these? Uh, call it uh, 7.5. Uh, 15 for four of them. So, we, so let's call the sender three tons. Okay, and these are 15, so 18 tons here. And what kind of thrust? Okay, I don't think we need that much thrust. We could do with a quick launch though. So 30 on these. Actually, if we're gonna go 30, maybe we should uh, do it in pairs. Seems reasonable. Ah, uh, the decouplers are expensive, aren't they? Yeah. Some of this... Well, it's either decouplers or par more parachutes. I don't know how much we get from having one portion of the decoupler returned. Okay. Now we've got everything in pairs. All right, let's get that pair first. And, okay, uh, that's 100. These, I'll go with 50. Still very much, okay, and uh, wait a minute. Yeah, these, these I'll stay with 30. Okay, I might be something doing something totally wrong here. We can tr test the launch stability enhancer Assuming that works right on the launch pad here. Hopefully that does. And well what can I say? Let's let's try this out. I have a, have a limited belief that this will work. We'll have to see. Okay, let's let's go to the launch pad. Uh, nighttime launch, unfortunately. Uh, it looks like we are in a situation where we can test the launch stability enhancers. So, SAS on, throttle up. Not that throttle matters in this case. Um, and after that, we just need to make sure we light the, the main booster at the right time. Don't really want it lighting at the same time as it does the parachutes. Okay, uh, let's see if I did the quick math correctly or not. Okay, looking good so far. We're just going straight up and then straight back down. No particular finesse to this. Actually, uh, considering that, I don't really need the inline reaction wheel, but but we're intending to bring it back down anyway. Hmm, this seems to be wrong. Oh well. Too late to mess with those now. We had a speed requirement for this, didn't we? No, it's just an altitude requirement. Okay. Probably we're going to end up firing the booster before these run out. Let's see. Huh. 
I can't click and drag the stuff in the GUI. Why is this? I can't control this. Why can't I control this? Hello. Oh, wait. No. But yeah, for some reason the GUI, this, the, this, oh, it's because of the electric charge. Oh, darn. Ah, uh, we ran out of electric charge. These don't have, uh, well, does that really mean I can't switch stages? I guess so. Uh, I can't give the signal to stage. So we could have done it, but I don't have any electric charge. Uh, okay, well at least we got the contract to test the launch clamps done. Let's go back to the... Yeah, well this is just going to go up and go back down. Well, okay, I guess we can time warp through it. But really, uh, I'm sort of surprised. I can't control the camera right now. Even if I ran out of electric charge, I should still be able to control the camera. It seems like I've got something else going on, except for the fact that I can't... I don't have any electric charge. I'm trying to move the camera and it doesn't work. Don't quite understand that. Well, here we go. First com complete failure, I think. I think. Yeah, it must be, otherwise we would have uh, lost a Kerbal. Ah, uh, dang it, I accidentally reverted. I shouldn't have reverted. Uh, I should have... Uh, my funds should have been subtracted on that. So uh, just just a note, uh, I should have lost 10,000 credits, uh, curbs, or funds, whatever. So yeah, I, I guess I should disable reverting, but then uh, there's certain times when I want to just uh, check the weight of something on the launch pad, I won't be able to do that. So maybe, maybe we'll just leave it be for now. And just, uh, just remember, I, I should have lost 10,000 out of that. Oh, well, well, I guess it's fair enough, because I also didn't get the the money for the... Oh, wait, did I fulfill the contract? No, uh, I didn't fulfill the contract for the launch stability enhancer. So, uh, uh, whatever. I, uh, I'll still say that I lost 10,000 and uh, that wasn't counted in the funds. Anyway, the key thing is we need to add batteries. And how much are these? Well, they're at least they're cheap. Finally, something that's actually cheap around here. Okay, batteries. I think that should be enough. How much do they carry? A hundred? Yeah, that should be enough. Okay, let's try this out one more time and uh, get this done. Okay, off we go again. And so uh, we once again fulfilled the launch stability enhancer contract. Was it really worth anything at all? Honestly. Okay, and I want to fix this. Well, now this is this is working. Camera's working. Camera doesn't work when your electric charge runs out. That's something I did not know. Okay, let's just uh, come on. I think it would be out of uh, physics range, but maybe I should have at least put parachutes on that pair. There's a chance that I would have opened the parachute in time for them to land safely to be recovered. Don't know that about that for sure though. Probably it'd be a dodgy thing. And the final pair. Electric charge is good. I'm sure our trajectory is good.
We have hit space. Let's see into those. And we can burn. Okay, that's fulfilled. Let's not get on an escape trajectory. Okay, very good. Stop that burn short, probably off the west coast. Let's make sure we've got electric charge, we do. Re-entry effects are merely a bit of amusement rather than anything critical, so no worries there. And parachutes. SAS off. Now we find out whether this is enough parachute to save this booster or whether it is not enough. Okay, we're over land. Don't know how far away from the KSC we are. I don't know if that, maybe that's launch clamps and we're actually 37 kilometers away. The surface speed looks to be decent for a safe landing. Oh, we've hit the ground. Oh, darn. Uh, can we recover that part as well, do you suppose? Anyway, let's uh, just recover vessel, see what we can do here. Okay, we managed to get some science out of it even, a suborbital flight. Stay put, Nick was returned, but that's the only part we recovered. There's still a little bit of debris. Maybe we can recover that. Let's check. No crew, of course, but uh, let's go to tracking station and check. Mm, well, let's see. Debris. Oh. Could be it. Let's see. Recover. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't say. And it doesn't show me my funds here, so I can't tell. Ah, these these must be the final boosters that we used. Okay. I guess that's that's all we've got there. All right. So, with that, uh, thank you for watching these two missions: getting into orbit with a fully reusable orbital vehicle and uh, getting that weird booster test out of the way. So yes, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. And with that, I'll see you next time.